Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome back to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, I want to begin to explore something that everyone experiences, but no one talks about. This is one feeling that everyone identifies in one way or another, and it holds people back. And I don't want you to think that I'm any different from you. I haven't been immune to fear either. Fear has actually played a really important role in my advancement journey, and I'll tell you why. But to start, I want to provide a few other examples of what fear can sound like. If we can't identify it, we can't use it to our advantage, now can we? Notice that I'm not telling you that you need to not fear or suppress fear. You'll notice that at Apply Yourself the Advancement Spot, we're really honest, and it is never our position that suppressing feelings or simply not feeling something is the way to go. It's not, and I'm going to explain why. But let's start with what fear can look like. Fear can look like putting off applications for an application cycle or longer. Some of my clients come to work with me after having, quote, quit. This looks like someone telling themselves, convincing themselves, that this step isn't for them for any number of reasons. For example, it's not the right time, or they don't really want this anyway, even though, deep down, they do. Fear can also present as heightened insecurity, lack of confidence, and not believing in yourself. Applicants who are working toward current application cycles tell me that they're afraid they're not good enough, their grades aren't good enough, their scores aren't good enough, that other people have more experience, more whatever than they do. This all stems from a feeling of fear. And this feeling can paralyze you and hold you back. Many people, even outside of application cycles, also experience fear. Fear of the unknown, keeping them paralyzed, stuck. Fear of what it looks like to take that next step, whatever it is, going for that promotion, going for that new job, going for that raise. What will it look like? How will it feel? What will people think of me? What will I think of me? Who will I become? And if you're the first in your family or circle of friends to go for that advancement, you might be afraid of what they'll think or say in front of you or behind your back. So you might feel the pressure to just stay the same, to settle to avoid making others uncomfortable with your advancement. Fear can look like that too. And among others, I also see a resounding fear of failure and fear of embarrassment if you fail. That sneaky voice that makes you feel bad even before you start. We're going to talk about failure in the podcast next week, so I'm not going to get into that now. But what I will say is that maybe you feel pressure. Or maybe you feel the weight of other people's expectations on you and you don't want to feel embarrassed if it doesn't work out this time or worse yet, feel like you're disappointing someone who cares about you. Lastly, there's the paralyzing fear that results from wanting something so badly, working so hard to achieve what it is that you want to achieve that you find yourself in a position where the next step is actually to take the next step to apply, for example. You've wanted to get into that program for so long. You've worked so hard in school, internships, volunteer placements, practicum placements, co-op placements, professional roles, and others. That when you get to the point that you're ready to actually take the next step, fear takes over and those thoughts sneak into your mind that sound something like, you can't do this. Who do you think you are? Don't be greedy. You should be grateful for what you have and you shouldn't want more. Or... Other people have what it takes and you don't. So you decide to take a year off or you put off the applications altogether. And over the course of that year or more, you just can't stop thinking about what it is that you truly want. I get it. But here's the thing. None of that is true. All of those toxic thoughts that can lead to toxic decision-making or at the very least, decision-making that holds you back does more harm than just delaying your success. 
It actually serves to form and inform the opinions that you have of yourself and what you're capable of. And we can't ignore that application cycles and advancement can be competitive. But as you know, here at Apply Yourself, we understand the competition, but we don't let it hold us back. A few things here. First, and hear me out, fear and competition are socially constructed. Let me say that again. Fear and competition are socially constructed. This means that the societal structures and institutions on which we often rely for our advancement have developed in such a way that breeds toxicity, competition, and unhealthy lifestyles. For example, we talked about the toxicity and resultant toxic behavior related to the grading curve in Rick's episode. And yes, we also know that spots and programs are not unlimited and we can't expect them to be. But what we can expect from these institutions is more support and actually having a handle on and accountability for the kinds of professionals they are producing. And companies involved in related application cycle components have developed in such a way that their marketing to us is totally fear and competition based. Marketing based on scores and grades. I know I spent money at these companies too. Well, Let me tell you something. I've been on several academic admissions committees at every level, as well as professional job search and promotion and tenure committees. And I don't care what these companies say. I don't care that you've heard that your personal statement or short answer questions or supplementary materials don't matter. I've heard that too. I don't care that people say that only your grades and scores count. And why don't I care? Because I know it's actually not true. Sure, these things matter. But if grades and scores were the only things that mattered, everyone with perfect standardized test scores and straight A pluses would get in, but they don't. How do I know? I've been around these tables as an active member on these admissions committees. Programs actually care about who you are. Admissions committees actually care about who you are. Your experience, the significance of your experiences to you and how they will impact not only your work in their program, but also beyond their program. And just so I'm clear here, it's not all about test scores and grades. So why does this narrative exist? Because big companies are making money off of scared applicants who want so badly to get in. Because standardized testing allows for standardized teaching, and that can drive costs down for a company. Applications are harder because they are completely individual, completely unique, more time intensive, and application development actually takes unique skill and experience to teach and help applicants to develop the skills that they need. And that's what we do here at Apply Yourself. To be clear, I founded Apply Yourself based on a clear understanding of student mental health and well-being. Being a university student myself in undergrad, my master's, my PhD, and in law school, teaching at a Toronto university for over 10 years, and now teaching at a Toronto law school, as an admissions committee member year over year, and as a regulated professional, a lawyer, who to get to this point has gone through several testing, examination, and standardized testing processes. Oh, and as someone who actually cares, who's not all just talk as someone who actually acts in sometimes really hard circumstances like this one, trying to revolutionize the student experience, student success, and well-being, debunking and demystifying processes that applicants perceive to be secretive. And that's a huge reason that I founded not only Apply Yourself in 2015, but also started this podcast, a place to be honest, unfiltered, and to actually provide useful insights to students applicants, and professionals. So fear tells you that you can't. I tell you that you can. And so now we're going to totally reframe fear so that it no longer holds you back. I came up with this acronym pretty quickly, actually. And I hope that anytime you identify a feeling that is holding you back, you remember this acronym that reshapes the way that you think of fear. So here we go. And if you couldn't tell already, I developed this acronym using the word fear. F is for free. You are free. Free to become the person, the professional that you want to. Free to develop a life beyond your wildest dreams, to create that life for yourself. You have your own autonomy. You have your own agency. You are free not to buy into the competition narrative. We don't here. 
You are free to choose a better way, like I am doing here with Apply Yourself, creating a better way rather than giving in to systems that are toxic to people and their well-being. I am free. You are free. You have freedom of choice, freedom of opportunity. If something feels out of alignment with you and your goals, you have the freedom to choose otherwise. You have the freedom to pursue. You have the freedom to decide that you will not give in to the socially constructed pressures of our systems and instead believe with me that there is abundance and room for all of us. Unique opportunities that we will find for each of us where we will feel aligned, happy, successful, and find continued, thoughtful advancement. We are free to reject competition and instead support each other. Free to do better for ourselves and for each other. And on this note, if you're a part of our Apply Yourself community, you also know that we, I, feel so strongly about this that in our community, we, I, have a zero tolerance policy for competitive natured behavior. We are a competition free zone, 100%. And if you know me, both personally and professionally, you already know that this is the way that I am and have always been. We are 100% supportive all the way. So if you want to be around like-minded people who are looking for advancement and to build a life beyond your wildest dreams with support, new friends, hope, and collegiality, you have a home here. And we take care of each other. You have the freedom to pave a new way with me, to create this community with me, because it just doesn't have to be any other way. We are free from competition. We don't have to give in to the systems that are already in place. So join me in this community where we support each other, free from competition, where we have a collective abundance mindset, where we believe that there is room for everybody and everybody has a place. E stands for elevate. At Apply Yourself, we know that mindset or the way we think predicts close to 100%, if not 100% of our success. Now, of course, we know that certain achievements may not happen instantly or on the timeline that we have in our heads, but if we persevere and we continue to know, not believe, but know that we will achieve everything we desire and more, that our advancement will follow and we will build a life beyond our wildest dreams. Your perspective, your thinking, the narrative you believe for yourself, How you perceive yourself must be elevated above and beyond the narratives that society constructs for us, whatever it is, in any number of circumstances. You must believe. Believe in yourself. Believe in your skill. Believe in your abilities, your abilities to grow, make good decisions, be thoughtful, mindful, and present. Believe in yourself and believe that you deserve, period. Believe that you deserve whatever you want. And no, it's not too much. No, you're not greedy. No, you shouldn't feel guilty for wanting more and more and more. You can have everything that you want. There is no limit and no one, including ourselves, gets to set a limit for us. We elevate beyond constructed limits because they are just that, constructed. We, you, I, we can all want more, strive for more, achieve more. Just for one moment, imagine a world where everyone achieved the level of success that they desired, where everyone achieved a life beyond their wildest dreams. What would that world look like? To me, that world looks like massive networks of support, of people building each other up, not tearing each other down. It looks like everyone realizing that we are and continue to be part of one and many communities And that the success of one means success for all. And success for all means success of individuals, of families, of communities. Imagine that world, especially during this challenging time for all of us. Imagine that world. Elevate your beliefs, your perceptions to that level. And just watch how your thoughts and behaviors change. You'll focus much less on the competition and much more on support, building, innovation, and community. And you will surround yourself with people who want the same. Now that's a world that I want to be a part of. A stands for activate. Activating ourselves, our physical actions, behaviors, energies, and thoughts 
based on and informed by constructive, productive perceptions and beliefs about ourselves and the communities, the world we want to be a part of. Activate as a free, empowered person, informed by your unique experiences, elevated abundance mindset, and the kind of world we want to create for ourselves, our families, our friends, our communities, and our future generations. Activate from a place of inspiration. And last, R for resilience. None of this is easy. As you already know from spending time here with me, every journey takes twists and turns, most of which no one talks about. Enter the Advancement Spot podcast. Our paths and journeys may be unpredictable and challenges will most certainly pop up. And these challenges will ebb and flow in their frequency, intensity, and duration. But that's okay because you're resilient. You spring back, you recover, and you persevere. Nothing can stop us. And we're not alone as part of this community that I'm building. You are resilient with all of the support that you need here. You spend your energy not on toxic behaviors or people, but you spend your energy on developing your abundance mindset, developing your skills, your resolve, and your ability to be different in these challenging processes. Supporting those around you and not falling into the trap of fear-based, competition-based institutions and marketing campaigns. It just doesn't have to be that way and we can change it together. So next time you feel yourself making a decision, big or small, that moves you further away from your advancement, remember this acronym. FREE, Elevate, Activate, Resilience, F-E-A-R. It no longer means fear. It means that we are free. We have our mindset as our most important tool and we elevate it in order to work for us rather than against us. We activate as free, empowered people supporting ourselves and the people around us. And we are resilient. We bounce back and we do better. We keep getting better. No decision is too small to really consider. Going out versus staying in or the decision to apply. You have to feel that your goals and actions are aligned. When you feel out of alignment, remember this acronym and really think about your choices. Then count to five with Mississippi's and then consider whether your decision is still one that you want to make. Will this decision propel me forward or will it hold me back even in the smallest way? This goes for even activities that we engage in every single day, our habits that we participate in every single day. Will my decision to continue participating in this habit propel me forward or hold me back, even in the smallest way? This will be incredibly powerful in your advancement journey. Thank you so much for being here with me today. See you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode leave this episode a review and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.